Hello, this is PsychBoost, helping you with your psychology publication one video at a time. This video is on development, and in this seventh GCSE video, we'll be covering early brain development. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. So, a very big thank you for your help, guys. To join them, follow the link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So, I imagine you're here to study GCSE Psychology. So here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification. We're going to cover all of them in this video. As we go through the video, they're going to be highlighted in red text. So you're going to need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. So when we think about the earliest stage of brain development, we start with a long and extended neural tube. The front of this tube then swells out into three sections the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. The back of the tube will then form the spine. Now this process is called differentiation. What will happen to those early structures is as follows. The forebrain will develop into the largest section of the brain called the cerebrum, or the cerebral cortex. The thalamus also comes from the forebrain. The midbrain eventually develops into part of the brainstem and the hindbrain develops into a structure called the cerebellum, as well as the rest of the brainstem. And as I've said, the back of the neural tube becomes the spinal cord. At around six months into pregnancy, the brain is very similar structurally to the adult brain, with as many neurons. There are certain brain areas mentioned in the specification, and you can see them all on this diagram. Let's talk in a little more detail about each of these. So we have the cerebrum at the top of the brain. It's the largest structure and it's split into two halves, a right side and a left side, called cerebral hemispheres. You can see the cerebrum here, from the top down, from the side, and sliced from the front, top to bottom. The cortex is the outer two to four millimeter surface layer of the brain. It's folded for extra surface area and contains mostly cell bodies. Each cerebral hemisphere can be divided into four lobes. We should be able to name them and have an understanding of their basic functions. The frontal lobe is responsible for thought and planning, as well as social behavior like your facial expressions. The parietal lobe is used for touch sensors and bringing information from other parts of the brain together. The occipital lobe is for visual information, and the temporal lobe is for understanding spoken language. If we cut the brain in half, we can see the thalamus, one on each side of the brain in the center. The thalamus acts as a hub of information, sending sensory information to the correct areas of the cortex. The brain stem is at the bottom of the brain and connects the brain to the spinal cord and onto the rest of the body's nervous system. It provides basic autonomic functions like keeping your heart beating and regulating your breathing rate. Under the cerebrum, there's a structure called the cerebellum. It's a small kind of wrinkled structure and it's involved in balance and coordination. So that was a quick guide to early brain structure and some of the neural structures they develop into. We now need to clearly explain all that brain development is linked to function. Let's start by saying in order to carry out a function, the part of the brain responsible for that function needs to develop. You can be asked about four functions. So it's important to understand the brain regions that are associated. Autonomic functions are controlled by the brain, but not consciously. Good examples are breathing and heart rate. So the brainstem needs to develop for autonomic functions. Sensory processing requires specialist areas of the cortex and the thalamus acting as a hub to develop. Voluntary movement is controlled consciously by a specialist area of the cerebral cortex called the motor cortex. The cerebellum is also needed to process balance and coordination information. The process of thinking or cognition involves planning for the future and solving problems. The development of the frontal lobe is needed for cognitive thinking. So brain development, like most things in psychology, is determined by a combination of nature and nurture factors. So what do I mean by that? Well, nature is the idea that the brain development is influenced by inherited genetic factors. We do have evidence that genes can even influence factors of the brain such as intelligence, with research showing that people who share genes such as twins have similar IQ levels. This suggests the inheritance of genes that code for brain development. Nurture, on the other hand, suggests that brain development results from an interaction with the environment. 
And there's evidence for this too. Research shows that a fetus's brain can be damaged in the womb if the mother abuses drugs or alcohol while pregnant. But most psychologists take the interactionist approach, that there's a complex combination of both nurture and nature influences that create the development brain. Okay, we've covered the content, but you need to be able to use all that information to accurately answer questions. Here are five that I've made to test your skills. So pause the video, give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together an additional video showing you how to answer these properly. For everybody else, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video on development, Piaget's Stage Fairy.